And welcome into another week of Every Day We're Covering. Chris Parks, SJ Munoz with you here again to talk some college football and some wagering, and we hope uh, you have some fun along the way. Uh, SJ, uh, kind of a ho-hum week for us, I guess, as far as the picks are concerned. But, you know, the good news is we weren't on the bottom side of the ledger. We were even keel at 500 pretty much, so uh, not too bad of a week. Yeah, it's pretty decent. For once, we had a, we'll get into the picks later, but we had a little bit of good fortune from, from the books, so we'll talk about that here in a minute. But yeah, another good weekend. Um, did some pretty interesting games, to say the least, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that later, like I said. Yeah, yeah, there's some good stuff there. Uh, unfortunately, the team that I cheer for did not have a very good weekend. Uh, yours did not either, but uh, uh, they played pretty good teams, both of them. Uh, unfortunately, Iowa State was having some fun in the first half. It was kind of trading blows there for a little bit, and then uh, they just ran out of gas and started making some mistakes, and it just did not go well. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's always interesting cause I, I saw somebody make a comment and this was something I thought that would be fun to bring up as far as college football fandom in general is concerned. Cause somebody immediately was like, well, is this what everybody wants then? You know, we're going to get our doors blown off instead of losing 17, 10, we lose a lot, but we're scoring. I mean, what do you, which one do you want? And you know, it's like, honestly, to me, that's kind of a, you're trying to put a square peg in a round hole for one thing, but you have to have both. I mean, you got to score to win games and you have to have some mistakes as a possibility out there if you're going to be scoring points. So yeah, your defense needs to play well, but they can do that and your offense can score. Those both things can coincide at the same time if you want them to. And that's the way I would like it. <laughs> yeah. And when you, you know, you look at uh, certain situations, like in this case, obviously different teams, but kind of the same deal. You're heading into a game where you're a big, I mean, double digit sometimes three touchdowns four touchdown underdog and you end up losing just as you know losing soundly as most people would predict or even expect mm -hmm. but then afterwards you act like it's some stunning shocking revelation that <laughs> how did that happen i mean you in our in, in the case you know the, the team i follow like would almost a 20 point underdog you, our, your chances of winning are very slim if mm -hmm. not none and then afterwards, you, you lose, and everyone, oh, the sky is falling type situation. And being a new coach, that kind of adds to the, mm -hmm. you know, the scenario in this case. But still, at the same time, it's like basically what 99% of people that watched the game thought was going to happen happened. But it's some, you know, <laughs> catastrophic event that mm -hmm. what the hell are we going to do now type of feeling. And I, I just don't get that. And I know that's across a lot of fan bases. So that's kind of where I was trying to make the correlation. It's like, I mean, what you expect to happen happens, and then you're shocked. It's mm -hmm. Yeah. You gotta be a little smarter than that if you're gonna talk to me on a daily basis. That's all. I, I don't. It, just, it doesn't make any damn sense to be shocked by yeah. what the expected is. Yeah. Well, and you know, I don't know. I just don't. I don't understand kind of where some of that mindset comes from. Sometimes, you know, it's like, you know, every game is different. Every season is different. You know, yeah, there are some teams out there that certainly have their kind of you know style mo, and that maybe makes their games closer perhaps you know the team across the state for me is like always been like that in Iowa they play defense and they try to keep games close and give themselves somewat of a chance um but and it works I mean it worked last night sometimes it works yeah. sometimes it doesn't yeah. but you gotta live with that yeah but you know that doesn't you, you can't always impose your style either I mean the team right. has to go out and execute it so it, it, to me that's like okay whatever I mean you have your minds made up on what you like or don't like but uh I'd rather well, I'd rather the team gives it rolls the dice a little bit and sees what happens rather than just play it safe to the vest well you know the the situation can change too with the fact where it's you know you got to maybe got a lead and you you know kind of let it get away from you yeah or the situation where you're down by 30 and you mm. come back and make it lose by 10 you know which you know happened a few times we saw this week and it's just it kind of, i mean i guess i mean a wise man once said losing sucks right we can all agree to that anybody <laughs> yeah. that's a fan of any team agrees to that mm -hmm. but at the same time you got to have some type of a grip of reality where it's like i mean it's a loss but in the big scheme of things, like how does it fit into the whole to the whole thing? And I understand fans were, you know, fanatic. Obviously, it's short for you know fans, short for fanatic. So we get that part. But if you're gonna have a, some any type of nuanced conversation, you got to kind of factor it into the bigger picture. And you know, take a loss as a loss and move on and 
try not to let it happen again. I mean, as much as your team can, just you know, try to get better every week, like you said. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Yeah, it's, yeah, it sucks. You don't want your team to lose. Um, and some games are really, really bad, and you just want to forget about them, and that's all you can do. Move on, play the next one. That's that's all. That's all you can, any team can do. So yeah, it might uh, sound simple, but it's. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what else. You're gonna drive yourself crazy just you exactly. know, trying that. <laughs> like every game or life or death situation. You're not gonna make it very long, especially in in the in the cover business, which we're trying to get into. Yeah, here, so. no doubt. Uh, well, as we get going here, we always like to give a little nod to what we might be uh, sipping on here as well. And I've got one here from a, a brewery right down the road here in the States in Des Moines uh, that I really like a lot of their stuff, uh, Confluence Brewing Company. Uh, Des Moines IPA is what I'm sipping on here tonight. Uh, I'm not typically one of those, like, I love all kinds of crazy hoppy IPA beers, mm-hmm. but this is one that's, uh, I don't know, it's got the right balance. Uh, I, I tend to really like this this one, so I, I keep it in the rotation for sure, especially during the summer months. How about yourself? Yeah, we kind of talked to, you know, just a minute ago of how, you know, losing sucks. So uh, regardless of the situation, sometimes you go a little heavy with uh, with the uh, pops there. So uh, and, and with that being said, I'm going with a, a seltzer tonight, Quirk um, from Boulevard. This one's a cherry blossom and lime. So just a little bit of easy Sunday night drinking. Um, we'll still count it as a beer tonight for me. There you go. A little cover. You're still supporting the hometown there. Too, exactly. So. That's what it's all about. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so let's take a look back here at our picks uh, from last week, uh, and you depend on, on how you're going to you know, uh, view this stuff or, or take us for whatever time of the week you want to take it for, and that's kind of what we'll bring up here in a second. But as we've got it marked, it was technically a 3-3 three, three and push type of week here for us uh, on the show. Uh, and one of those was uh, the game that uh, got things started with uh, Louisville. I had them in uh, a game with uh, NC State, and that was a uh, 13-10 ball game, so it ended up being a push. Louisville was a three-point favorite in that game. Now, another one that we could consider a push as well is uh, the Minnesota-Louisiana game. You had that one. When we talked about it initially, it was a a 9.5-point spread, but it went to 11, So, and that's what it ended up being, the margin. So sometimes, like we alluded to at the beginning of the show, the book helps you out. Every now and again, got it definitely... Take those when you can get them because it's very few and far between. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and count that, count that as a, as covering there, just because of when we made the play. And um, like any you know, good gambler, whatever you want to call yourself, uh, prognosticator, <laughs> etc. Uh, we're gonna take whatever little victories we can get. So that's that's a W. Yeah. But house makes the rules, isn't that how it goes? <laughs> so house makes the rules. We're, we got we got that a W on that one. Yeah. So that'd be a, so technically we would be a three two and two type of mm-hmm. week here for us. So uh, we had that one. Uh, Texas A and M. Even though we found out later in the week weren't going to have their starting quarterback, uh, they still got it done against Arkansas. They were six and a half point favorites. They won that one thirty four twenty two. So that was a victory. Uh, we mentioned that Louisiana game it ended up being 35-24 Minnesota. They had to score a lot late to come back oh. to make that happen because Louisiana was winning a good chunk yeah, of that exactly. game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was just going to say they had to lead for part. Not not only threaten the, the spread, they they were about to win out right there, it looked like. For, mm-hmm. So uh, I guess credit to Minnesota for not letting uh, Northwestern beat you twice because that might have would that have been if had they lost that game. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Kansas, uh, this is another unfortunate, and we've talked about this plenty throughout the uh, year so far. Sometimes you don't have a key player that ends up on the field, and that's what happened for the Jayhawks. Uh, Jalen Daniels has been dealing with some back spasm type stuff, and then it was just before the game that they said that he's not going to play. So Jackson Bean got the start. They hung tough for a little while, but then it got away from him in the second half. Texas ended up winning 40-14, to so did not cover that 17.5 that they were getting. And, yeah, certainly when it's a dynamic player like that, that changes the, the game. Well, and that's, you know, maybe – more about Texas than it is anything at the same time too. Mm-hmm. We've had them, you know, a couple of picks here and there, and they've they've proven to be worth it. This so they might find themselves on the other side of, of this show, at least from you know the picks we're making here, because they've they've proved it on the field in you know two different occasions. But obviously the injury played you know played a big factor for Kansas. Can't really, but that's I mean that's the way it goes. We've talked about it the last few weeks. It's just you know part of the game, and that's part of the risk that you take. But uh, mm-hmm. Texas just, I mean. They look like they're going to be in that final four here when we get to, to the end of the year or beginning of next year, I guess I should say. Yeah, it's certainly looking like it. Uh, Oregon, another impressive win for them. They took care of business against Stanford, 42-16. to They were laying 26 and a half, so we did get that cover. We got that one correct. Uh, West Virginia, 
Uh, not only was getting nine and a half, but they won the game. They went down to uh, Fort Worth and beat TCU 24-21 on a late score. Uh, it was a pretty uh, kind of tight ball game throughout that one, so impressive win there for the Mountaineers. And then we had Washington laying 18 against Arizona. They ended up only winning by a touchdown, 31-24. So that one did not hit. And then that kind of brings us to our topic we were going to bring up here is there seems to be kind of a a rash of those types of games so far this year where maybe one team has a big advantage, and we've seen some really big comebacks, whether or not the team actually pulls the full comeback off and wins or just makes it close. But uh, we saw quite a few of those just this past weekend. Yeah, I mean, obviously, considering the things that happen with athletes, I still don't think many people are in on, in on it or anything like that. It just <laughs> It's just an incredible coincidence. And, you know, maybe it uh, plays into the, you know, kind of notion of just like, you know, focus and just motivation for teams or how hard it is just to, you know, keep that 40, uh, you know, full game, four quarter mindset. And also just, you know, against you're playing teams that the talent is a lot more evenly is about, about as even as ever been spread out across the country. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, teams that you thought maybe, uh, you know, get them to the third quarter, they're just going to, you know, give up or roll over. They've got players that may have been on in a team in your conference on a different squad, or maybe they were from your team and you're playing against them now just with the transfer and uh, transfer portal, the way it is and mm-hmm. things of that sort. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely uh, holding a lead seems to be a little bit more difficult these days, even than it's ever been. And maybe, uh, no, that makes things a little more interesting for us as well. Yeah, and that that it must be a lot of the mindset. I I never played for a team that was in that position, so I don't know how that feels <laughs> having a giant lead in the game and wanting to hang on to it. But uh, yeah, it just seems to be the case. I mean, it always kind of has been. You you've seen that a lot where a team maybe you know puts a foot off the gas or they take the starters out, and you start to see the right, team score a little you. bit. But yeah, I mean, we've seen some big ones like this past weekend. That Washington game was a much bigger spread for a while. Uh, USC and Colorado. USC was dominating that game in the first half, and then they just kind of took their foot off the gas as well and I mean give Colorado credit they just kept playing and and, you know made some made some late scores to make it interesting but um, it's just it's funny to see that Uh, the one that was the most impressive I think over the weekend uh, was maybe not a game that's really a marquee matchup per se uh, but uh, Baylor was on the road and taken on Central Florida and they outscored them 29 nothing in the last 19 minutes of the game to come back and win 36-35 uh, just, you know, absolute game where you thought it was written off. This is over. No reason to pay attention. And here they come just chipping away. And that's the second time this season that they've done that, where they've rallied big in a game and made it interesting. Uh, so I don't know. I, maybe this, sometimes it's the nature of the team, too. It's just it's odd the way that works out. I don't know how that happens. Well, yeah, especially when you make a habit of doing that. Obviously, mm-hmm. it's maybe not good for the blood pressure of your yeah, your coach or your fan base, but at the same time, you got to make things interesting, I suppose. Uh, yeah, just doing it once is crazy. Doing it more than once is almost impossible, but they're getting it done one way or another. It's like that, like that, uh, the pick in the derby that's the late kick, you know? I, I don't know. They got something in them that's good down the stretch, I guess. <laughs> Second half teams, I suppose. Uh, it's been interesting to watch. We'll keep our eye on that to see how much more of that we see here throughout the rest of the season. Uh, one game that was kind of a marquee game here over the weekend, uh, where ESPN College Game Day decided to go to for the first time ever, was uh, uh, Duke playing host to Notre Dame, and it turned out to be a game that lived up to the billing. It was a really good, hard-fought game. Notre Dame had the early advantage. Uh, Duke came back and got the lead kind of late uh, there, early in the early to mid fourth quarter but then Notre Dame with a, a late drive it was kind of interesting it, you know it was kind of one of those scenarios where they're just getting into field goal range and they really were kind of playing it safe and just trying to get some more yards ran a dive up the middle and the guy busted it off and ended up scoring a touchdown to, to seal the deal anyways uh, really unfortunate injury at the end of the game as well Duke's quarterback uh, Riley Leonard uh, got his knee kind of rolled up on from the wrong side and his leg went the opposite direction of where it's supposed to go. So I imagine he is done for the season the way that looked. And it's uh, unfortunate when you see those types of things happen. And, you know, 
I don't know why it hurts more. It doesn't matter when it happens, obviously, that it's going to end a guy's season, but it's when it's at the very end of a game, you just, like, it makes it hurt that much more. It's like, geez, we could have just got out of there and, you know, played the next game. It's like, that that really, sometimes that just seems that happens quite a bit in those situations. Yeah, you know, especially being early in the season on top of that, you know, maybe if that, you know, not as serious or you get out of the game with it, maybe get back on the field at least sometime this year. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, that's not happening in this case. But even just look at, you know, another – you know, crazy scenario is that basically Notre Dame's on the the other side of the coin from last week, you know, losing, <laughs> scoring, and lose, giving up a touchdown in the last, you know, less than a minute there, and then they score and with less than a minute to go this week. That's, I mean, that's, that's basically why you love college football. Like, oh, I don't want Notre Dame to win. Don't get me wrong. I don't, that's about the only team I'd maybe cheer for Duke, and it's, if it's because it's not basketball. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so like, it's kind of like the lesser of two evils in this case, I guess, on, on, at least on this athletic field. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, I mean, just to kind of have that swing of emotions got to be kind of, kind of an interesting experience for that Irish team, just to go from you know the punch in the gut to. The punching someone in the gut's got to be quite the feeling. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And they've got another interesting one coming up here this weekend as they'll uh, take on Louisville, who's uh, off to a pretty decent uh, start this season. So they've had a, quite an interesting schedule for them, which c- kind of sometimes doesn't happen, you know, because they have that independent schedule, and you just never know how good some of those teams are going to be. But pretty, pretty interesting game. Uh, another part of that whole scenario that we wanted to bring up a little bit was uh, of course, uh, we mentioned game day was there. Um, it was cool. It was cool to see the campus, you know, kind of get their time to shine. You always you always love that, I, or at least I do, I guess, when, you know, the little guy who hasn't, you know, been in the spotlight before gets their chance to, to shine on that big stage. And they had a great crowd that came out, and, uh, you know, they made lots of jokes about, you know, nerds running the world and all that stuff. So they had some fun with it, and uh, I, I thought it was just a, a good overall scene. Uh, Kim Jong was the the guest uh, picker, and he had a, <laughs> quite a few funny choice things words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He he said some uh, maybe not so uh, kosher things on the broadcast, and the, the guys just kind of had to laugh it off and shake it off. Because you know, you mentioned something at the end when he's making his picks. He's like, two things I care about in the world: my hoe and my Duke Blue Devils." <laughs> he's like, oh, "Don't worry, it's it's my wife. No big deal." <laughs> But that's, yeah, that's that kind of shocked them. Those times where McAfee's glad that he's up there, take the heat off of him for a few minutes. But <laughs> no, <don't. laughs> it's gotten a little wacky, even even for some people's taste that maybe kind of were on the edge there, of liking different stuff. But it it's gone a different way. But uh, back to just the the game they're at, just you know uh, the Dukes for the Duke setting. It's kind of it's even kind of surprising when you hear that. that wow, you would, I mean, I know there's some programs have had some you know long long decades and. Of, of you know poor play and not been used to winning but you would just think at some point they would have been to almost every campus as long as that show's been around and yeah how many, but i mean you figure you get you know 14 to 15 shows a year now and just you can't go to the same place every week but well you you know they'd want to in certain situations i mean mm. fox has done it this year game there but <laughs> no uh, but, but i mean just to spread it around and not be at some campuses is kind of surprising even when it's a team or school not known for their like football history still it's kind of still surprising when you don't see that they like oh we've never been there like oh really that's yeah. that's crazy but i mean it's good for them and almost pulled it out maybe next time yeah and yeah. either 30 yeah. years or whatever yeah <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they had their time to shine and didn't quite pull it off but it was good uh, good game one thing that got brought up during the, the game day broadcast uh, was of course they had to go back to the well. You know, you know last week we talked about uh, Washington State's head coach being upset with uh, what he interpreted as a snipe to his team and the, the game that they played against Oregon State. It was a little bit misinterpreted on his end. I'll admit that, but still, we kind of know what those you know biases are a little bit from the media giants when it comes to those types of things obviously they've had a big influence on all of this conference stuff that has gone on uh, they, they can't deny that they're part of those discussions and part of what has driven all this change uh, so it's understandable that those schools are going to be very upset at them uh, but, but Pat McAfee for some reason had to go and you know kind of beat the dead horse and and make a point of saying you know well you know oh there's that flag again you know how many years is ESPN you you know, giving shine to Washington State because that flag has been here in the program. We don't owe you anything, blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, you know, dude, come on. Like, what's the point of bringing this back up again? 
I mean, I guess maybe he's looking for a little bit more job security there, even though they paid him far too damn much, if you ask me. I mean, I'm not the only one probably shares that opinion, but yeah, yeah it's kind of like, you know, a lot of times you hear when do a post game interview, pre game interview, or even in game interviews, which I think are the worst idea since <laughs> Terry Bradshaw on a studio desk, but that's another another conversation for another day. But or Lee Corso still doing college game day. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's just really interesting to see the kind of topics that just crop up, you know. And and obviously he was brought to that show to to bring those kinds of things you know, to light. He's, he's supposed to be a little bit more flamboyant and divisive, and that's what he's there for. And, and some of it's fun, I'll admit, and with the bringing people out to try to kick field goals, that's been pretty entertaining. But, uh, you know, some of the rest of it, yeah, it's like a little over the top. Like, dude, this, this doesn't need to be an issue. And the, the one thing that we were talking about beforehand with the whole, like, Washington State flag thing, that's credit to them. They they made that a story because they brought that flag to every single game. They figured that out. They always recruit people to bring the you know they send it around the country. They recruit people to go stand and hold it. They they brought that attention to themselves. So uh, you know it kind of deserves it as well. And it's also a symbiotic relationship with ESPN because that's something that gets them attention because it is a story. So you know I don't know you can't you can't have it both ways. It is just uh, too bad that it has to be a divisive thing rather than just having some fun with it. Well, they always talk about you know kind of fans and you know fans want media too. Of course, wants personality and you know you don't want the same canned answers. You get tired of saying one day at a time is what it is. All this mm-hmm. stuff and then. These coaches and players, or in this case, mostly coaches, uh, show their personality, quote unquote, and then you kind of pick and choose which is okay and which isn't okay. I mean, the guy and you know, the Louis boy with his bags, he can say whatever he wants, doesn't matter, and it's amazing. I can't believe, oh, it's, that's just the best sentence I've ever heard, ever heard in the history of living. And but if somebody else says something that you know, maybe you know, some people agree or some people don't, but it's you know, it's trash trashed for whatever re- the reason may be if he's mm-hmm. not on the right team or doesn't kiss the right butt or you know what have yeah. you so it's kind of just like i mean what do you want you get personality you complain about it they don't say the same crap over and over which i think is annoying and i, I don't like it and then they're robots and they're not even a regular you yeah. know you interact with them they're just like a you know a, a figurehead whatever so i don't i just like that's kind of where i don't get this whole you know back and forth is going i mean if someone if someone says something about you you say something back i mean that's that's I don't. Funny. I don't yeah. get why you can't respond to somebody calling you out, no matter if they're 80, 50, 20, Who cares? Like, if someone talks about you, I mean, don't say something nice. You don't want something. Or you can't say something at all. Isn't that what he <laughs> exactly, said? Exactly. Yeah. You know, when you're a little kid, like I just don't get where, how, how pick and choose. Like, what's the difference? One guy says something stupid. The other guy says something stupid. Is yeah. what it is. Like, yep. there's your quote. There there they, <laughs> use that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, put that on the billboard. The bulletin board. Uh, I did. I did think it was cool, actually. What uh, Dan Lanning at Oregon said after the fact that you know they, of course, the whole hoopla when they were getting ready to play Colorado and stuff, and he you know made a big deal about his speech and stuff, and and he came back in the the post game was like, you know, you caught a clip of what I said all week long to my guys, you know, like they understood where I was coming from, and he's like, and I have a job to do. My job is to motivate my team. And I knew how to do it that week, and that's the way that I chose to do it. I mean, if some other people don't like it, that's fine. They're they're doing their job, but I'm doing my job, and that's what I thought I needed to do. And then he even you know came out and said, you know, like I don't disrespect uh, you know Coach Sanders. I think what he's doing is great. He's like I think what he's the attention he's bringing to college football is great, but the way that I knew to motivate my players was to, you know, maybe disparage him a little bit. And that's the, the route I chose. So uh, I thought that was interesting to hear that perspective from him and, and the kind of the reasoning why he chose to go that route. Well, and this is why I think I've always thought this is an amazing idea. And I mean, if they do it great, I'm, I'm never going to get rich off this idea, but I think it'd be amazing just to do a, a hard knock style of, of a, a real NFL game, get, get the whole field mic'd up, hear every word that's uttered, everything that's said from the coaches on down to the equipment managers. And then maybe would we wouldn't be so caught up in these little, you know, back and forth, which basically are, I mean, it's in the, in the heat of, heat of battle, heat of competition. Um, mm-hmm. This it's, it's emotions, you know, got the best of both of them, but I don't think that's a good or bad thing. I think that's just, that's it, what it is. That's just reality. Yeah. Like they were caught up in the moment. They were, you know, coming off big performances. And I'm sure a lot of the people in the PAC 12, especially, but even people that are on their schedule are, they're not going to say it, you know, out in the open because they'll get such so much, you know, ridicule and criticism for it. 
but they're probably damn tired of people talking about you know Dion all the time like he's you know the best thing since whatever mm -hmm. when he hasn't done a damn thing yet mm -hmm. so I can imagine that you're pissed off about that if you're a, you know a fellow coach or a, an opposing team like it's it's got to you know it's got to kind of get get you going when you've especially a team like Oregon that's had success on the field and I thought it was but this is just the way the fans think I thought this was another you know dumb point of people thought they were so you know genius for bringing this up that Oregon has so many uniform combinations that oh, yeah. how can they say that about like I'm, I'm I, I can almost I'll bet you anything out there that the coach is not the one selecting you know from tweeting this stuff out week to week I don't know if you've heard of a company called Nike but <laughs> they got they got a few dollars in the bank so whatever they say you're gonna do and it doesn't really matter so I don't I just don't think those two correlate I mean people thought they were so you know oh I'll get them I thought they yeah. you know boom roasted they thought they just <laughs> Freaking just burned them, but I thought that was stupid and didn't even correlate. And it was just, I don't, I don't even, I, don't, I couldn't stand with that one. Even if I wanted, even if I was the biggest Colorado fan, I think that was the dumbest thing to, to yeah. try to put, throw that in the argument. That has nothing to do with a, a pregame speech or clicks because basically he's saying you're all, you're all barking no bite. You need to break it down for the simple minded folks. Mm -hmm. Like that's, yep. that's all he's saying. Yep, yep. Yeah, and he told his guys go out there and prove it with your pads, and then they did, and that's uh, that was I thought that was cool. Uh, all right, we're gonna dive into our, our picks here this week Let's get and to it, yeah. try to get some get some covers here for you. Have some fun with some college football instead of all these adults arguing about yeah, the crap. Your Madonna, man. Jeez. <laughs> right. uh, I was gonna throw one out here that's uh, a little bit earlier in the week. Uh, this is a Friday game. Uh, that a line that I saw that I, uh, it's not the most exciting game in the world. I'll give you that. But uh, Western Kentucky is only laying seven on the road against Louisiana Tech. I like the way WKU has played here so far. Uh, I think that that's a good play there on Friday night. Just get your juices flowing a little bit. I had to go ahead and take a look if there's a holiday or something because there's a hand, handful of games on Friday night and decent ones at that. I mean, maybe – not the best teams, but matchup wise, you could you know yeah. get some good action. And one of those I was looking at was uh, Kansas State and Oklahoma State. I like the overs on this one. Uh, K State's averaging about thirty eight points a game. Well, Cowboys are struggling a little more offensively. Um, but the way I'm looking at it uh, from this perspective and for this play is that um, the last two games, Oklahoma State's allowed thirty three and thirty four points uh, respectively. Which I'm sure you like one of those numbers there. Yeah. <laughs> benefited your team there um but yeah i just i'm kind of thinking you know it could be you know a 40 20 type game and that get that get us over that that uh that's that cover there easily all right yeah that's a nice one to look i did see you by the way all the games i saw a note from somebody the other day that like what is this week so i think it was from saturday from saturday on through whatever date like i don't know 55 of 56 days had some football game being played it's like that's that's, that's, that's incredible that's the kind of numbers we like yeah, that's, a, that's, <laughs> that's what we need it's a hell of a stat <laughs> right, tv's gonna get a workout uh all right uh, i'm gonna go uh the old red river rivalry is coming up here this weekend uh, the Texas Longhorns are uh, five-point favorites against Oklahoma. Now, you would think that I would be on the other side of this maybe because my team just got blown out in the second half against the Sooners. But, boy, Texas has performed in every spot that they have been in this year. I've been really impressed with the improvement that Quinn Ewers has shown. I think he did do a lot of work in the offseason to be a much more accurate quarterback. Um, and they've got uh, you know a pretty good defensive front as well that's really done some havoc for them. Uh, Oklahoma's defense, I think, is pretty sporadic. Uh, you know, Iowa State hit some big plays on them early in that game and could have had some more had the game maybe kind of trended a little bit differently. So uh, I, uh, I, I like the Longhorns in that. That spot i'm gonna take them with that just laying the five yeah I, that was I, I didn't that's not one of my plays but i like that obviously we talked about texas is kind of proving it on the field and just obviously paper doesn't mean anything but just you know the competition what we've seen I, texas is more of a, a tested team this year so mm -hmm. i'm with you on that to be honest i wanted to go money line um for my end but i wasn't getting any i didn't ha i don't have any numbers yet on that uh from the book the uh, oh, gotcha. outlet i usually go through so I, I wasn't i don't want to take the spread i want to go straight money line so that may be something i end up playing uh later here in the week um, another game i was looking at i like the overs uh this this week and basically you know it's just kind of the numbers are there for this game as well uh lsu and mizzou 62 and a half is the total um lsu's put up you know 72 this year 41 i mean 
Last week, what, they scored 49 in a losing effort? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, they're putting up some points. And, SEC um, defense right there. Yeah, that, you know, that's the thing, but it's still going to be there, right? So it's however you can spin it, whoever you have, uh, yeah. you know, in bed with you, so to speak. Uh, maybe not in the literal term, but maybe so. I don't know what ESPN's doing. But um, either way, I do like the overs on that one. Mizzou's also averaging over 30 uh, points a game. And kind of going along the same lines, I, I, I like LSU in this game. And so I'm maybe thinking more Mizzou's uh, apt to give up uh, a, a big number as well as maybe, you know, get some one of those late kind of comebacks to make it look respectable. It's like it's, you know, e- even even a, you know, 42-35 type game, something like that. So I like the overs in that one too. So I'm going so far I got some double overs going on you. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Uh, another one I'll throw out at you here. And this is. This is a little bit dependent on if things turn around with the quarterback situation, but even if not, I'm still feeling pretty good. Uh, Kansas obviously did not have the weekend they wanted to against Texas, but if Jalen Daniels can get back healthy, which it sounds like he's kind of just dealing with a day-by-day kind of sporadic thing, which is unfortunate, but if he's in the game, they're only a three-point favorite against Central Florida, and I think they take care of that business. I I like the Jayhawks there. Uh, this one, uh, this might be kind of a little bit of a risk. Uh, but Washington State is getting three points against UCLA, and you know the reason I think that uh, being undefeated coming in, you know the ranked team, you would think, you know that's a Washington State, you know easy win. It's on the road, Rose Bowl, ain't exactly like the most intimidating environment, <laughs> unless it's the actual bowl game, maybe depending on who's there. But it just kind of, you know, it's kind of one of those. I, I'm going to label it a risk because if. Washington State is still getting points as the on paper, you know, quote unquote, better team. It always makes you kind of wonder. It's kind of one of those where, you know, no, the the books maybe know know a little something we don't, or they're maybe they're hoping the public's going to flip that number. Mm-hmm. It is early in the week, so that might be part of the case here. But I mean, with three points, I like that. I could even see Washington State winning the game outright. So I'm definitely going to take the three points. Yeah, I like that one a lot. That was another one I kind of noted. Uh, you know, especially the way this last week went. You know, it would definitely lean that way. I mean, Oregon State with a pretty impressive win over Utah on Friday. And, of course, Wazoo and Oregon State had a heck of a battle. And and so and that UCLA lost to Utah. So that's a, that's an interesting game to keep an eye on. Um, another one I'm going to throw out there, and I'm also maybe feeling a little bit risky on this one as well uh, because it probably sets up to be a letdown. But, boy, Kentucky has looked pretty solid here this year. They're getting 15 points at Georgia. Now, I know Georgia's uh, Georgia, but they had a little bit of a scare against Auburn here this past weekend. And and the way that Kentucky just kind of blew the doors off this weekend, uh, I think they're feeling good. So, uh, given 15, I I like that number. I'm going to take the Cats there. Yeah, I mean, two touchdowns, that's that's a nice little, you know, dropping the bucket there so I, I would take that as well like that's a that's a good one like you said the way kentucky has been really impressive and like i understand florida is not georgia but at the yeah. same time <laughs> i mean the, the a blowout and the blowout in that league is still a blowout so I, yeah I, that's something you might want to look at later in the week if even maybe you know give you a couple more points here or there depending on you know yeah. what, what service you're using uh the last one i have is uh Maryland and Ohio State. Now, Maryland's getting 18 and a half. Kind of the same situation as what you kind of laid out there between those teams. Maybe a you know a, a top four to top five Big Ten team against one one of the big dogs there. Um, but 18 and a half, I like that. I mean, considering that you know Maryland's already notched a 22 point win over Michigan State and also a 27 point win uh, just this week against Indiana. I mean, I don't, I know, say what you want about you know certain Big Ten teams in certain divisions, but winning, you know, by three touchdowns plus in the in, in any, you know, power conference. I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at. I don't yeah. know. It doesn't matter who you're doing it against. We've talked about the comebacks and the letdowns and that sort of thing. So mm-hmm. you're winning soundly. I mean, I, I, I'm sure a lot of teams would like to be in Maryland situation, regardless if they got Ohio State 18 and a half. That, that's almost a steal in my book. I could, I'm not saying they're going to do much more than that, but I, I'll take the 18 and a half yeah. for sure. Yeah, I like that one too. I, I that was one I noted. Um, I de- I don't. Uh, I'm not going to guess. Uh, we're pretty even here, so I'm not going to give any more official picks. But I'll just mention a couple of other notes that I wrote down uh, when I saw some lines that I thought, yeah, that looks that looks nice. Uh, Michigan is giving 19 and a half at Minnesota, 
that's one to keep an eye on. If it was a home game for sure, I'd be all over that. But being on the road, you never know. It might be a little quirky. Uh, so, But the way they've been playing, they've been playing solid. Uh, and then Oregon State's uh, only laying 9.5 on the road at Cal. Uh, but Cal's been a little bit up and down. They, they could make that interesting. I don't know. So I'm not. that's not one I'm totally sold on. But, boy, Oregon State, uh, that was an impressive win, I thought, last week uh, there against Utah. So. Uh, it's been fun. There's been some good games out there, and we look. Uh, hopefully, we've got another great slate here this weekend to, to keep our eye on. Uh, that's what we like. Yeah, the only one I throw out there is, uh, you know, this could be even be borderline on a uh, oof that that sicko realm, but uh, <laughs> Purdue and Iowa, I, the under is 41 and a half. That's the only other one I I may end up take, taking a flyer on here later this week. But other than that, yeah, that's a uh, that's kind of the, the picks on my end as well. But that could be one of those that. Could be real ugly, but um, you know, also could be like the Wisconsin Purdue game where you thought it was going to be a you know a seventeen ten, and Wisconsin ends up having the offensive night of their uh, night of their life. So yeah. <laughs> you never know. That's why we play. It's fun, but that's another one. That's the only one I throw. Um, that's like you, not an official play, but I, I yeah. thought that was something worth maybe taking a look at or keeping your eye on as the week progresses here. Yeah. Yeah, and a little bit of an unknown going on with Iowa now, too, because Cade McNamara looks like he's probably done for the season. Uh, it's a, kind of a freak injury there. It wasn't really even hit, and his knee is not good, apparently. So, interesting stuff. See how that how plays. How you about tonight? You get confident? We got a big Sunday night game for the, the big the Sunday night game. game. What do you think? Are you... I mean, you know, is there a football game? I just thought there was a Taylor Swift appearance. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't even imagine. Like, I only get the extra clips, and, like, obviously, no matter what you do, it's going to be on your, your timeline or, you know, you can't avoid it. But I can't even imagine just being an actual fan of the team. That would just drive me crazy. But, but I mean, they're winning. It's a different story. Start dropping a couple passes. It might, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. change that yeah. a little bit. You know, it's all fun and games now. But, uh, yeah, that was just a little bit over the top. And yeah. I think, I don't know, it's kind of like one of those – you know, sell out for a few few little extra clicks type thing with maybe some of the college coaches we've talked about in a few weeks. Just they they went all in NFL did. Oh yeah, no doubt. And you know, at the end of the day, it's like yeah, it's I, it, uh, it, it's it gets old hearing about it. But for for the fact that I like the team, uh, they're getting attention. Okay, great. That's that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> extra attention's good. Uh, but I think yeah, the, I'm I'm pretty confident here tonight. I think they take care of business against the Jets. They've been a little bit shaky since the whole four plays into the season Aaron Rodgers injury thing so they've got some good players I, I do like some of the core young core that the Jets have but uh, they, they need some more pieces before they're a real solid team and Chiefs kind of got on track last week so Hopefully well it's just continues. like our picks you know you never know what's going to happen when they make the schedule this would have been a you know almost a much wa- must watch game excuse me with you know Rodgers going yeah. against Mahomes had he not been hurt so mm-hmm. it's but I mean that's that's the way it goes, man. That's that's part of the game. So <laughs> yep. just you take you take the breaks when they're on your side, and you uh, you know cuss them out when they're against you. That's <laughs> exactly. All you can do. Exactly. Well, hopefully we're not cussing you out here uh, next week, and we're uh, celebrating with some more beverages uh, if we hit some picks for you here again this week. That's S.J. Munoz. I'm Chris Parks. Uh, of course, like, subscribe, share. We'd appreciate if you uh, start spreading the word a little bit about uh, this fun program we're trying to have with you and. Uh, Uh, Every day we're covering. We'll see you again next week for some more covers.